Okay, now let me, let me throw a, another thought in here. Just step out of this for a moment. This is easy to follow, but it needs to be, needs to be thought about. Um, let's see how we're all students of prophecy, right? Let's see how easy it is to, to figure this one out. This is um, 1,260 days, all right? And in this history, Jezebel. How did, not Jezebel, how do you spell Jezebel? One L, okay. What is this history? Pardon me? Elijah. Let me give you a little more help. What is this history? Okay, this is the history of Elijah. No doubt about it. I want you to see, though, that the history of Elijah is the history of the 1260 years of papal rule, is it not? The 1260 years of papal rule in the Church of Thyatira in the book of Revelation. Who's the symbol of the papacy in the Church of Thyatira? It's Jezebel. At the end of the 1260 years, whether, or 1260 days, whether it's Elijah's drought or the Dark Ages, well, who, who comes on the scene? At the end, either, either story, who comes on the scene at the end of this period, this 1260 day period, whether it's literal or prophetic? Pardon me? Elijah, the true prophet, right? Why are you looking for the false prophet? Okay. It's Elijah. We already said it, right? Everyone with me. Elijah shows up. In the, the, the three and a half years of drought, it's really Elijah, is it not? But at the, in 1798, who shows up? Who shows up with his concordance in 1798? And who does Sister White say William Miller tip, is typified by? Elijah. Okay, so this is identical history, is it not? So when we see... The time at the end, the increase of knowledge, and William Miller raised up with this message. Okay. When it comes to 1844, one of the things that has happened in 1844 is that William Miller has brought an Elijah message, right? The first angel's message. And he says, judgment is going to come. And in this history, down here in the summer of 1844, the Holy Spirit is poured out in the midnight cry, is it not? This is the midnight cry, MC. What was the midnight cry prefigured by in the story of Elijah? Pentecost? Fire counting down out of heaven at Mount Carmel, right? The midnight cry in 1844 has been prefigured by the fire coming down out of heaven on Elijah's offering. Who, who preceded Elijah's offering? The prophets of Baal, right? You see the prophets of Baal illustrated right here, correct? 1842. What do the prophets of Baal say about the first angel's message? We don't, we don't want that message. So in this history... It, right here, brothers and sisters, if you haven't thought about it, this is absolutely accurate and it's worth understanding correctly. In 1842, the United States began to fulfill its role as the false prophet of Bible prophecy. The United States, like all powers in Bible prophecy, have a political side and a religious side. They sold out their religious side when they rejected the first angel's message in June of 1842. And they begin to fulfill their role as the false prophet. The political side isn't sold out until the time period of 1989 when Ronald Reagan forms a secret alliance with the Antichrist of Bible prophecy based upon the fact that he thought the Soviet Union was the Antichrist of Bible prophecy while he professed to be a Protestant. Ronald Reagan, by his testimony, believed the Soviet Union was the Antichrist. And Sister White tells us, we don't have to be uninformed like Ronald Reagan, that all those who become confused on the subject of Antichrist ultimately will end up on the side of Antichrist. And that's what Ronald Reagan did in the Ronald Reagan years. And the Ronald Reagan years are marked in 1989 prophetically, which is the time of the end for us here at the end of the world. Okay, so these are 
very close histories, but it's in that history that where the political side of the United States fell. And now the United States, since Ronald Reagan, is fully active as the false prophet of Bible prophecy. But the false prophet is demonstrated in 1842. You follow my logic? If the false prophet is demonstrated in 1842, what's also demonstrated? Elijah. Elijah is the true prophet. So in this history, the story of Elijah, one of the things that it's teaching us, the story of the Millerites, is the Lord is making a distinction between the true and the false prophet. And it has bearing on several things in prophecy. Okay? So if you would go to 1 Kings 13, and we'll... Uh, uh, when did I start? We started way late, right? 